All right, students, this is part two of the experimental design video. We're going to be talking about examples and some uh, of the uh, more complicated uh, areas of experimental design. Um, first of all, what do you need in experimental design? Well, first things first is you can't just go willy-nilly and experimenting on stuff. Uh, so you need to have a hypothesis that's uh, pretty much um, vital. And then you need to have um, the scenario or uh, the conceptualization, basically, of what it is that you are going to be testing. Um, a control group, which will be will be uh, will get into later on, and uh, literature reading, a lot of reading. And what usually happens is that we um, you can't just have one perfect experiment. Um, it will go through as uh, some trial and errors. But let's check out. An example, straightforward, right? So this is a typical exper experiment questionnaire. Uh, it tries to investigate um, the effect of sales tactics towards consumers' intention to buy. Okay. So um, in this uh, experiment, the student or the experimenter uh, will have two. Whoopsie. Okay. Will have two. Uh, scenarios we call them conditions a and condition b and they will be presented to two different sample groups okay so uh, the group that has that reads scenario a will not read scenario b and vice versa so let's check out scenario a that you are walking around the shop wanting to buy a blu-ray player after checking the ones you want you see what you like and apparently it's a limited stock item selling for $3.99 okay how much are you going to buy this if it's a limited stock item uh, condition B if you see here it's pretty much almost all the same words and uh, except that um, it's not a sale it's just a limited stock uh, sorry it's just a, uh, a normal uh, priced blu-ray player for $3.99 so prices are the same but here it's meant uh, it's as if it was a sale and here it's just a typical 399 okay so you measure um, this you measure this and then you compare them using um, t-test and you get the results most likely this will have a significantly higher um, mean of likelihood to buy than this given that it's a uh, limited stock item selling is a proven tactic to increase likelihood of purchase okay now that's uh, very simple but what if we want to go one level deeper okay so instead of just seeing the exact the effects of a um, sales tactic we want to see the uh, the effect of country as a manipulative variable so um, instead of just a typical no-name brand uh, this one says that one scenario, scenario A, is a prominent Japanese brand, a limited stock item for $3.99, and then scenario B, uh, people, uh, the respondents will read that it's a prominent Korean brand for $3.99, um, but then, as is the case when you have two variables of country and uh, sales tactics you need C and D so in this one uh, so we have Japanese limited stock we have also we need to uh, have a version that says it's Japanese um, regular uh, price at 399 we have Korean limited stock and so we need Korean regular 399 okay so this is what is referred to in experimental terms as a 2 by 2 design Okay, where you have two uh, two IVs, right? two independent variables, each have two levels of manipulation. Okay, so like we said, we have Japan Limited, Japan Regular, and then we have Korea Limited, Korea Regular. Okay, now um, and this gets interesting, isn't it? Because now with this design, we can see whether for example, um, uh, uh, 
scenario sorry likelihood one or possibility one is that no matter whether uh, Japan is sold uh, limited or regular it will maybe it will have higher likelihood of being uh, bought uh, compared to Korean whether it's limited or regular right and we call that Japan uh, country has a main effect towards uh, likelihood of purchase or we can see that maybe doesn't matter what the country uh, a limited item stock sale uh, tactic will be better chosen uh, compared to the regular yeah. and that's say that is saying that sales has a main effect towards uh, likelihood of purchase however it might be interesting to see whether a limited version of Japanese will it outsell a regular um, sold Korean brand or and vice versa so comparing this to this is called interaction effect okay? whether uh, having sales and country together influencing the result so these are interesting stuff that you can do with experiments or if uh, uh, sorry and this means that you have already two IVs you have country of origin Japan Korea you have sales tactic limited or usual how they affect the intention to buy okay if you want to go one level deeper you can add country and price okay so uh, you have Japanese and Korean right you have a limited stock uh, or regular price but then you can also calculate whether it's 399 or 599 okay so this is already three independent variables and how many versions of the questionnaire you need you need one two three four five six seven eight right so this is called a uh, two by two by two where basically you have uh, IVs, three IVs, each manipulated into two levels. You have country manipulated into Japan and Korea. You have sales right, manipulated into limited or regular, and then you have price, low or premium, which is 3.99 versus 5.99. Right? So you need eight uh, versions of the questionnaire uh, in order to be able to answer these. Uh, this design correctly so it gets complicated right what if you want to add another country Japan Korea what if you want to uh, add Malaysia right then you would need the then this would be a three by two by two and you would need one two three four five six you would need 12 versions of the questionnaire and because the minimum is 30 respondents per um, condition so you need 12 by 30 you would need 360 respondents okay so which is not something that you want to do at an undergraduate level so but don't worry for undergraduates usually uh, a set or a two or three studies of two by two or three by two is enough so don't sweat uh, don't worry about it too much um, it's just something that you need to um, <clears throat> be mindful about it, okay so in conclusion um, because the experiment involves changing something and then seeing its effect it has the highest claim of causality okay statistically it's very easy to process it just uses t-test or ANOVA right very very easy um, it's very convenient. You just uh, make scenarios if you want to adjust the manipulate variables. It's very useful in the marketing context, right? However, um, there are also some weaknesses. I'm going to talk about this weakness in particular. Right? We've seen how it gets very complicated very fast. However, it, it's also very practical, sometimes too practical. For example, I want to test whether um, this website layout is seen as more appealing or not compared to this website layout. Now, um, design speaking, this experiment is okay, is valid. You know, I can do this experiment, I can have the results, and the results will be useful in the practical sense. However, in terms of theory development,
and the contribution to knowledge does this experiment have any value probably very little right so it's very easy for students to do experiment to fall into this trap of thinking of it as a practical solution but disregarding how it will contribute um, to the overall body of knowledge okay so um, these are some of the things that we don't cover in this um, presentation if you are uh, interested in finding out more um, do let me know this is my email agungs at sunway right um, but yeah let me know if you have any questions or if this is something that you think you may be able to use and I'll be happy to help even if um, you don't end up under my supervision I'll still be happy to answer any of your questions All right so that is everything um, thank you very much for listening I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it and I hope you find it useful thank you very much